let us look at electric charge electric charge we commonly represent this with letter q so electric charge is the property of a material electric charge is the property of a material responsible for electrical phenomena as you know very well electrical phenomena in materials includes properties such as the ability to conduct electricity and many other phenomena that are associated with electricity in other terms we can say electric charge is the property of a material or is the property of matter that works too the property of matter that causes it property of matter that causes it to experience to experience a force when placed a force when placed in an electromagnetic field the property of matter that makes it to experience a force when placed in an electromagnetic field by electromagnetic field we mean either an electric field which we will study later in the course or a magnetic field so because of electric charge if matter or a material is placed in one of these fields or a combination of both it experiences what we call a lorentz a lorentz force and this lorentz force basically is a force that acts on a material because of the existence of charge in that material so it is charge that causes a material to experience a force when placed in an electromagnetic field we'll explore electric fields in more details later on let us proceed now by looking at the types of charge okay create more space here we will now look at the types of charge to explore the types of charge to explore the types of charge let us perform a simple experiment in this experiment we are going to need a glass rod we are going to need a glass rod we are also going to need a piece of rubber Oops. going to need a piece of rubber we're also going to have silk and wool basically we'll need silk for the glass rod and we'll also need wool to rub it with the rubber piece of rubber to make it charged so here goes our experiment in the first part of the experiment we are going to hang a piece of charged rubber so this is charged rubber in the next part we are going to see how we can charge materials by rubbing them uh, even though we have not looked at that yet even though we have not studied it yet let's just talk about it as charged rubber basically this rubber was charged by rubbing the piece of rubber against a piece of wool so that gives it a charge okay now in this experiment after charging our piece of rubber and suspending it on a silk thread if we bring a piece of charged glass rod this is a charged glass rod we notice that the charged glass rod and the charged piece of rubber move towards each other okay this is going to be the first part of the experiment we have a silk thread which is supporting our charged rubber 
and we bring a charged piece of glass rod if we bring it near we see a force of attraction because the, uh, the charged rubber wants to come to the glass rod in the second part of the experiment still we have our silk thread and we have our charged rubber and then we have this time round another charged rubber so this is charged rubber and so is this okay let me label it here charged rubber So if we bring a piece of charged rubber towards another piece of charged rubber, we see a force of repulsion. This piece of charged rubber does not want to come near the other piece of charged rubber. So this force here is a force of repulsion. So this is a very important experiment because it gives us two things. So let's see the conclusions from this experiment. The conclusions from this experiment are that there are two types of charge. There are two types of charge. Okay. There are two types of charge. By convention, the charge on the glass rod is the positive charge. That is by convention and the charge on the piece of rubber is the negative charge. This convention was brought by Benjamin Franklin in the 18th century and later on it was proved using atomic theory. So that's one important conclusion that we make for now. Another conclusion also very important here is that like charges Another conclusion is that like charges repel each other. Like charges repel each other. That is very evident when the charged piece of rubber was repelling the other piece of rubber. And unlike charges, and unlike charges attract each other. That was also very evident when the piece of charged glass and the piece of charged rubber attracted each other and yet they had different charges. So we conclude that there are two types of charges, positive charges and negative charges. And we conclude that positive and positive repel each other. That is positive and positive, negative and negative repel each other. But positive and negative attract each other. This is called the fundamental law of electrostatics. Or the fundamental law of charge. The fact that like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. Let us now talk about the units of charge. Let us talk about the units of charge. In principle, charge is measured in a unit called coulombs, named after Augustine de Coulomb. So charge is measured in coulombs, we denote that with a capital C, and charge is given by current times time. We haven't looked at electric current yet, but electric current is measured in amperes, so one coulomb basically is given by one ampere times time of one second. Essentially what this means is that one coulomb 1 coulomb is the amount of 
on Coulomb is the amount of charge transferred. It's the amount of charge transferred by one ampere. By one ampere of current in one second. Current is simply the flow of charge. We will explore that further when we look at current electricity in further videos. So the unit of charge is the coulomb and one coulomb is the amount of charge transferred by a current of one ampere in one second. Typically, typically one coulomb of charge, one coulomb is very large. It's a very large amount of charge. So essentially, it's very difficult to have one coulomb of charge. So in most calculations, we will have submultiples, submultiples of the coulomb. For example, we'll have one microcoulomb being equivalent to 10 to the minus 3 coulomb. One microcoulomb, that's 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. One picocoulomb, that's 10 to the minus 12 coulombs, and many others. I have attached a table here, which gives us a detailed description of some of the subunits of the coulomb. We have the decicoulomb, centicoulomb, milliculomb, and their respective equivalences in coulomb. The common ones, however, are the microcoulomb and the picocoulomb. These are the two common ones that we'll be referring to. Okay. Oops. This is the same. So the microcoulomb is here and the micro microcoulomb 10 to the minus 12. They are very important. They are the most commonly used subunits of the coulomb. Let us now proceed and look at the types of charge. Not types of charge, properties. Let's look at the properties of charge. So charge has three main properties. The first property of charge is that charge is conserved. Just like mass and energy, charge also follows the universal law of conservation. For example, if I have a piece, if I have a piece of silk and I have a piece of glass rod, if I rub the two together, if I get the glass rod and I rub it with the piece of silk, essentially after rubbing, the glass rod is going to become positive and the piece of silk is going to become negative. However, I have not created any new charge. I have simply redistributed the charge between the silk and the glass rod. And essentially, if I add up this charge plus this charge, the objects will end up neutral again. So I haven't created any new charge. I have simply redistributed the charges. So charge is conserved. And we say charge cannot be created, charge cannot be created or destroyed, but is simply transferred from one object, transferred from one object to another. Okay. There we go. That's our first property of charge. Charge is conserved. The total amount of charge in the universe is constant. We cannot create charge and we cannot, cre uh, we cannot destroy charge. We simply transfer it from one form, from one object to the other. 
The second property of charge is that charge has additive nature. By the way, charge is a scalar quantity. So when we are adding charge, we do not need to take the effect of direction into consideration because it is a scalar quantity. For example, if I have a perfectly conducting sphere with one, two, three negative charges, and I bring it into contact, oops, I bring it to contact with another sphere of four, okay, five positive charges, the resultant charge is going to be negative three plus positive five, which gives me positive two. So this is going to be the resultant charge. As a matter of fact, at the end of this process, we'll have positive charge here and the positive charge here. The charges will redistribute themselves equally in the spheres to follow the additive property of charge. That's the second property. The third property of charge third property of charge is that charge, this is very important, charge is quantized, charge is quantized, the term quantized, quantized means that charge exists in discrete in discrete quantities discrete means countable for example one two three and so on these are discrete quantities and it is also known that the smallest possible charge that can be attained let me have a pen. Okay. The smallest possible charge which we also call the elementary charge is that of an electron is that of an electron Sometimes we call it electronic charge. And basically an electron has charge of 1.6 exponent negative 19 coulombs negative. So this is the basic charge. And all charge has to be a multiple of this, an integral multiple. So charge equals a submultiple or a multiple of the electronic charge, where n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. This basic equation here is very important in as far as charge is conserved, because it tells us that charge is quantized. Charge can only exist as integral multiples of the electronic charge. By the way, the charge on the proton is positive 1.6 exponent negative 19 coulombs. So we don't care about the magnitude here. What is important is the figure 1.6 exponent negative 19 because that is the smallest elementary charge that we can ever have. We cannot have something like charge equals two thirds of E. This is impossible because charge is quantized we cannot have two-thirds of the electron charge. Charge is always quantized. It can only exist as integral multiples of E, the electronic charge. For more information on this, you can read about millicans. Okay, need to get another color here. If you read about millicans oil drop, millicans oil drop experiment, Millikan did a very nice experiment to show that charge is quantized and his results were exactly this 
amazing so you should definitely check that out that's the third property of charge a very important property that charge is quantized okay so let's end this by looking at the ways of testing for the polarity of charge so i will erase this testing for the polarity of charge testing for the polarity of charge the word polarity here means positive or negative so at the beginning or in the uh, lesson we saw how to we saw how Benjamin Franklin conventionally assigned a positive charge to the glass rod and he assigned a negative charge to the piece of rubber but we have many other materials that exist in nature what if we are given a test object and we want to know its polarity we want to know whether it is positive or negative what do we do in that case so let's look at a simple experiment to test for the polarity of charge in this experiment we will need the following requirements the first requirement we will need is obviously the test charge or the test body then we will need a negatively charged body we will need a negatively charged body essentially this will be a piece of wood rubbed with cut fur that works well just like rubber that has been rubbed with cotton wool or wool we'll also need a positive positively charged body and for this experiment we'll stick with the glass rod that has been rubbed with silk that will work for us okay so let's begin carrying out the experiment i'll create more space here so the first step in carrying out our experiment We are going to hang the body or suspend the test charge with a silk thread. So there we go. Just to make it look nice. So this is our test charge. We don't know whether it's positive or negative or neutral. That's our test charge. We hang it on a silk thread, just making sure it is flexible. Okay, have more space here. Look at the second step. So in our second step, we bring the negatively charged we bring the negatively charged body in this case our negatively charged body is going to be the piece of wood towards the test charge so there we go let me draw this better so this is our test object and this is our piece of wood so this is the test charge this is the negatively charged piece of wood okay I'll just say negatively charged body. 
could be anything but in this case it's a piece of wood so it's a negatively charged body now if we bring the negatively charged body towards the test charge one of these things could happen number one if there is repulsion then that means the test charge that means the test charge is negative and in that case we terminate the experiment because we have already known that the test charge is negative why do we conclude so quickly when there is repulsion because we know that like charges repel we know that like charges repel each other however the second possible observation is attraction and this is quite an interesting one so if there is attraction it means the test charge it means the test charge is either positive or neutral it's quite interesting that neutral objects are also attracted by a charged body we'll look at this later when we look at polarization but very important here that attraction does not necessarily prove that the test charge is positive it can mean that the test charge is positive or is neutral so in order for us to distinguish between the two possibilities we have to go ahead and look at number three of course if it was repulsion then we terminate the experiment but if it was attraction then we cannot conclude yet so we we'll go to the third step where we have to okay so i bring the positively charged I bring the positively charged body in this case it is our glass rod towards the test charge so again there we have our test charge and there we have there we have our positively charged glass rod so one of these things could still happen if there is repulsion that means the test charge is positive in which case we terminate the experiment if there is attraction then depending on the results of step 2 if there is attraction at this step then it means that the test charge is neutral because there can't have been attraction for the negative body and for the positive body for the wood and for the glass rod so essentially if there is attraction on the second stage then that proves that the test body is neutral so this gives us a very important conclusion here that repulsion is the only should put this in capital letters repulsion is the only sure test for the polarity of a charge so every time we see repulsion that's good because it tells us that the charges are similar but attraction can mean one of the two things and every time we see attraction then we have to go ahead and carry out the second step to see if the repulsion of, uh, or if the attraction is consistent we conclude it's neutral if there is repulsion we conclude that the object and the test body are of the same charge let me conclude this by summarizing all the steps of testing for the polarity of an object so i'll make a simple flow chart here the first step to do here is to hang the test body so 
here we have the test charge after hanging the test charge you bring okay bring the negative body the negatively charged body and if you bring the negatively charged body one of these things could happen so let us create an if statement so if repulsion uh, okay so here we ask i think let's do this two things could happen here if it is repulsion then we conclude that the test charge is negative test charge is negative if there is attraction if there is attraction then that means it is either positive or neutral so we have to go ahead and ask more questions in order to find out what the reality is so we oops not this think at this stage we have to be bringing the positive body now So we'll bring the positively charged body in our case it is the piece of glass and after bringing the positively charged body once more we ask what happens and two things could happen if repulsion happens we've got to make this better so if this is repulsion then we we'll conclude that the test charge is positive if there is attraction We conclude that the test charge is neutral. Also remember it's very important to note here that neutral does not mean absence of charge. It means the existence of unequal but opposite charges in the same object. So that makes it electrically neutral. Okay, in the next part we are going to see electrostatic charging or electrification, uh, the methods of electrifying an object.